Hi everyone, it's Chelsea Stumpf with Titan TV. I am the broadcast tools product manager here. Um, some of you might know me. I do a little bit of sales, a little bit of customer support, and I do all of the Titan TV trainings. Um, you are here because we are going to be sh uh, doing the Television Guide Services 101. Uh, where does the guide data come from? Uh, I have Heidi Steffen with me. Um, Heidi is the Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing uh, for Titan TV. And Heidi, I'm going to let you just take it from here. These people are busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you everyone for attending um, and listening to this. We will be recording this and we will send an email out after this to everyone with a link to the video, um, especially if anyone that wasn't able to attend, but they registered, they will get the email as well. And then if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please put them in the question and Chelsea will help monitor those and I will answer them throughout the webinar. One thing I also wanna note here, the information that I'm gonna provide in this pres presentation is to our knowledge. We've been with um, Titan TV now for over 13 years between Chelsea and I, and we've learned a lot. Uh, but we also know that the industry is always changing and where data is coming from. So if you know something that maybe we have stated incorrectly, if you can let us know, we always want to be as accurate with the information that we provide and we're able to then provide on to others. So with that, let me go ahead and get started. So where does that data come from that populates the guide on your TV? I'm gonna go through some of the places that where they come from, but let's really start at square one. Who is who in the guide data business? So the four major ones that you need to be aware of, first of all, is Gracenote, formerly known as TMS, Tribune Media Services, and is now owned by Nielsen. Then you have TiVo, which is formerly Roby and was the original legacy TV guide service. Red B, or also known as FYA, FYI Television, they're also part of the Ergenson International Company, and they're the company that provides Titan TV with our baseline data for our different guides and data services. Then one of the newcomers in relatively in the industry is TV Media. This is a company based out of Canada, but they're really starting to make a way into the US market. So that's who who in the guide data service. Now, the question to ask is, let's say a consumer calls in and they says their guide data is wrong. One of the questions you need to ask them is how are they watching TV? Are they watching it via cable? Are they watching it satellite over the air, or over the tap? We're gonna first start with cable because cable is one of the most complicated ways or, or of the four of where the get guide data comes from. So to our understanding, Grace Note provides most of the guide data to most of the cable companies in North America. It's our understanding that Red B FYI provides to AT&T Cable. Then TiVo, they said the best way to kind of explain it, this is for retail or cable company. If that cable company provides, is using either the TiVo guide platform or the set-top boxes, it's TiVo that's providing that data. And then if it's one of those smaller cable companies, it's more likely TV media that provides the data. Now, the interesting thing we found out with cable, cable can actually, some of the companies with the hardware they have, can actually ingest, ingest directly the piece of data from your over air signal. So they could actually get it directly from the station. We've also been told there are some other cable companies that actually gets the data directly from the station through email or things like that to be able to put into their system and send it out. So this is the one that a lot of times we get a question and it's cable. I will always suggest start with Grace Note and see if they provide. Now we do know they can't necessarily tell you all who they provide data to due to NDAs, but that's at least a good start for you related to cable listings. This one's a little bit easier. So satellite, again, to our knowledge, um, last we knew that TiVo was providing the data to Dish Network and then Grace Note is providing it to DirecTV. Again, this can change at any time, but to our last knowledge, that's who is providing that data. Now for over the air. So again, this is any of the consumers at home that has an antenna that's receiving your signal. And then that antenna is pulling in what we call piece of data and be able to display on the TV. But you're like, what is piece of? You probably might not know exactly what it is. It stands for program and, program and system information protocol. 
It's one of the ATSC standards, and it is required by the FCC for all full power stations to have the piece of data to go out in their digital signal that then shows up on their consumers' televisions. So here's just to kind of give you a visual if you're like me and need some visual on how it works. So here's all your different video streams, the metadata with the PSIP, it goes into the transport stream, out onto your antenna, into the TV receiver, and this is what it looks like on the television. Note with over the air, how that guide looks really depends on their television or their converter box. And that also depends on how much of that television or converter box is actually set up in the guide to be able to display the information. There are some on-screen guides that can go 14 days in the future, some are just that day, and some just have titles where others have more program description. So who provides piece of data to the different broadcast stations? So Titan TV, we provide over nine, 900 broadcast stations that equals about 4,000 distinct channels daily. So if you're a piece of a client and the, the over the air consumer calls in and there's information that's incorrect, that's who you'd go to. Uh, we also know that both Grace Note and then ProTrack by Myers, they actually provide PSUP Donnelly to the PSUP um, stations or PBS stations. We do know that there are some companies out there that it is actually the station um, that owns the PSUP data and software, and they're the ones that are setting out the PSUP. There's also some where you can just in the piece of hardware just put static information. And when I say static, it's just like the station call letters channel number and basic program or just as you know kcrg programming one thing i did want to note if you are a low power station you are required by this july to go digital you don't necessarily have to have piece up but you have to have static piece up because for a lot of the television or converter boxes won't be able to pick up your signal without that so it's just as important for them to have piece up so that's a little bit about piece up so now we've talked about cable satellite piece up. Now let's talk about over the top. This gets even more confusing, I think, than necessarily cable, partly because there's a lot of players in the market now related to over the top. And I don't even think, you know, consumers understand who's getting and providing what. So let's keep it simple. So from our understanding, Grace Note provides data to the big OTT providers, except Netflix. So again, if you're thinking my data is not incorrect on this linear schedule guide on this OTT platform, I would start with Gracenow. But again, if you know that that is actually a TiVo stream platform, I would actually go to TiVo then because they are providing the, the data for any of their TiVo um, programs or hardware. We were in direct contact with YouTube and we are found out that they do manage their own program and linear guide data. So if you're not sending your programming schedule to YouTube and you have a linear OT YouTube channel, you need to be able to send it to them. And we'll have some information later as well as far as who you need to be sending them to. And then there's Sling TV. So Sling TV is a little interesting because Sling TV for a while was doing a really big push that their service over the top also came with a free antenna to get the local channels. So really then, that linear guide on the Sling TV is actually then guide data coming from PSAP, so from the station for over the top. Then the formerly uh, Paramount Plus, formerly known as CBS All Access, it is our understanding they get their data from Red B FYI Television. And then there's the local station apps. This is also a mixed bag as far as where that guide data is coming from. We do know that some of the stations directly feed the station, that linear tool, but we also know there's some third parties, for example, like Titan TV, that we would provide a data feed into that, similar to PSUP. So we kind of went over all of those. The one I kind of wanted to point out that's a little unique, and I actually got this directly from Roku's website, is they also, similar to Sling TV, had the option for a HD antenna. So as this says, if you have a, a HD antenna, connected to your Roku, you use live TV channel guide to browse, browse both live streaming content and over the air programming. So what that means is that even though they have this blended guide that's showing over the top and again over the air programming, the over the air is actually coming from piece of again. So if you have a consumer calling in and say my, you know, the Roku is linear programming is wrong for your station, 
you need to ask, are you getting that information from the antenna? Do you have an antenna set up to be able to pull that in? And again, I won't read all of this, but we will be able to send out this after the presentation. So you, if you want more information, you can also link them to that. Chelsea, do we have any questions so far? Not as of yet. As a reminder, there are there is a chat section and a question section that you can feel free to ask any questions um, that may come up. Okay. Now, everything we talked before this was all on screen. So the guide that would show up on your television. Now let's talk about online guides because it's a little bit different and there's more players in play. So we'll start with the one that we own, which is TitanTV.com. This data is actually a, a combination between the data that a lot of our customers use and enter into MediaStar Scheduler um, and update through that, and information that we get from Red Bean. It's a blended information that goes out to the TitanTV.com consumer site. Then Grace Note has its own, which is tapped, uh, adapt to it. It's our understanding for a TV guide, even though they're no longer owned with TiVo, that they still provide them the data. One of the new ones that I saw more in the market is called ontvtonight.com. Doing my research and on the guide, I even reach out to them. I'm not quite sure where they get their guide data from. My assumption is probably one of the big guys. Um, but once I find out more of that information, I'll let you know. Then we do know that tvpassport.com is actually TV Media's own consumer site. And then there's local stations websites. Uh, we found that majority of local TV stations actually have one of our Titan TV's next gen guides. Um, we've also seen some zap to it guides on those affiliate guides and then we've also seen some station built and managed guides um antennaweb.org which is also one of our own operated now has a guide on it and then there's another website similar to antenna web called nocable.org guide and that guide information is provided by tivo so again this is why guide data is very confusing because there's so much of it and it's all over the board so the question is why are the guides sometimes so are incorrect you know um you might say i'm sending them out to the data providers but why they are incorrect and there's a lot of different reasons why that might be the first thing i really want to point out and emphasize is that it could take 48 to 72 hours before this information that you send to one of the data providers before it gets into their system and once it's in their system they have to send it out to all those people that we just talked about they provide data to but here's a catch. If it is a cable, we have learned that many of the cable boxes at consumers' homes only pick up the guide data once a week. So let's say for Saturday's program, you send it out to the data providers on Tuesday. So it's updated by Thursday or Friday and sent out to their system. But let's say the cable box was originally updated on Monday for that whole full week. Your program change now is not in that cable box. Now there are some newer cable boxes that will update once a day but again that will not do anything that's your current date but you still have that 48 to 72 hours from the time you send the change to one of the data providers before it gets to the cable box so that's why a lot of times last minute changes are not picked up in the cable or satellite systems now one thing that's a little bit different though is with piece up so this is over the air stations Stations can provide updated information in their piece up. There's multiple ways to do it. For example, any of our Titan TV clients, we provide a tool called MediaStar, MediaStar that allows them to make those last minute changes in there. Once they publish, it automatically updates the piece up on the FTP site. The other thing kind of similar to the cable boxes that we talked about, there are some piece of hardware that might only look once a day to update it. Um, some might, might look every five minutes or some might be a manual push um, after that once a day. So the best thing to do is go ask your engineers, how often does our piece up go look for changes on the FTP site and pulling that down and sending it out? Especially if your station is really wanting to make sure that that information is updated in real time or as close as you can so that your programming on either over the air and on your website is correct, that it's able to do that. Any other? Questions that have come in so far? Yes, I, we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is we get a lot of calls about Young and the Restless just having a generic program description on a regular basis. Can that be updated to include daily listings? 
So what we do know for some of the soap operas and even talk shows is that, and this is really the case for um, soap operas, those companies, syndicators don't want to give out episodic information too far in advance. Um, what we've been told is they don't want to ruin, spoil the, the plot, basically. And that's really the case for a lot of the soap operas. And then for some of the um, uh, game shows and stuff or talk shows, they might not have the guests finalized. So if you're a Titan TV client, we can, and you or you can within MediaStar be able to do more descriptive. Otherwise, if you know where those young and restless, young and restless is not showing more um, descriptive um, descriptions, I would reach out to that provider. Um, but for the most part, a lot of times what we're seeing for the soap operas, you're not gonna get episodic information too far out. Thanks, Heidi. Uh, a couple other ones have been coming in. Um, would the cable box delay for updates also apply to satellite boxes? Yes, that is the case too. Because again, they have to go. And I'm not quite sure, um, to my knowledge, how often the satellite boxes are looking for updates within program. But I'm going to assume it's a similar. If it's an older box, it's going to only probably only update that guy data once a week. If it's a newer one, it could probably do it more often. All right. Any other ones? Um, yep. Another one came in. Um, I believe this one might be a two-parter. Um, are you saying that even customers who use the same cable service may have their listings updated at different times depending on what type of box they have? That is correct. Uh, uh, the, the timing of the schedule updates really come into play with President Biden's 8 p.m. Eastern speech tomorrow night affecting a shift in primetime programming. Yes, so when my understanding again from the cable boxes, if it's an older one, and again, so if it's a someone that's had cable their whole entire life and they've never had any issues with their cable box, they might have an older one. It's gonna be your maybe your new cable subscribers or someone that's had replaced their box is gonna have that newer box. Um, and it's hard to know what if that current box has that. So depending on like a president speaking, unless the cable company is really pushing that change out, um, it might not get on all the cable boxes. And I think that's why overall, a lot of times consumers that have cable just realize that their guide data is not always accurate what's on their television. So hopefully that helps related to cable changes. Uh, another question, um, why do the weekend schedules need major edits in MediaStar, even though the schedules are sent out well in advance? Um, there's multiple reasons to that, um, and I kind of go into that a little bit more later in the presentation. Um, but some of that, what we've, when we've talked to, for example, Red B that we get our data from, is that depending on how the schedule is sent out, and a what I can tell you what most data providers in this day and time, that when you send that schedule to a data provider, there's actually someone what they call an editor at that company that is taking your program schedule, you're sending it as a PDF, an Excel, a Word doc, and they're manually entering that into a program of theirs to then be able to send out. So if you are always sending the full grid, for example, every time, and you're not noting changes, they might miss some of those things. So I'll go a little bit later with some best practices on how accurately to send out or, or best ways to send out changes versus just your monthly or weekly schedule. But we can go, if you have additional issues with MediaStar and um, weekend program, what I would advise is email our customer care at titantv.com. So we can look deeper into that to see if maybe there's something else going on that's preventing those changes or causing those changes not to happen. And then it's not necessarily the workflow from you to Red B to us. Chelsea, any other questions? That looks like the last one for now. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah, thank you. So as we've been talking about, the complexity of the guide data market really leads to many screen and on screens being inaccurate. One of the things that we really want to make sure everyone's aware of is who and what they're sending it to. So here are four of the major data providers that you need to be sending your schedules to. 
Um, they're all generic ones. We do know that like, for example, TiVo, they actually sign an account rep or like I said, an editor, and you're supposed to send it directly to them. But we've been told if you have a question or you just wanna include, include the sporting support. Um, I think that's also the same for TV, um, FYI television. Um, we are working with YouTube uh, TV right now. Um, I've got a direct contact as far as where to think, send things, but I'm in the process of getting just kind of another generic YouTube um, contact so that you can include that on your schedule as well to make sure that they get updated. Um, and one of the things I also wanna point out is at Titan TV, we're actually working with right now TV media and Red B Television, FYI Television to actually electronically send the programming schedules directly to them instead of via email. The idea is gonna eliminate that person like I talked about at the data provider having to enter things and having human error. And it's also gonna make things more efficient because it's gonna get there quicker. You'll be able to do some queries, drop into their system. And the idea is our goal at least is to from that 48 to 72 hours from the time you would send it from media star scheduler to the data provider, it shrinks it down so that that 48 to 72, maybe goes 24 to 48. So then that's shorter and that's a shorter time for cable as well. So stay tuned for more information as we go roll that out. So next I wanna get into some more commonly asked questions. So how long will it take an update to be reflected on the online guide? I wanted to point out a few things. So again, I've been emphasizing that 48 to 72 hours. So for example, if it's a, a, a zap to it, you send it to Grace Note, it could take 42, 70 hours before it gets up into their system. And maybe it's even 24 hour, but there's still a time period. Um, if it's for Titan TV affiliate guides, we actually provide for all of our guide and piece of clients, if you don't have our full scheduling to web media star, that you can make those change and automatically update onto your website. If your station doesn't have it or you're unsure, does my station have access to this or who has access to this? just send an email again to customercare at titantv.com and we can let you know about that. And then again, Chelsea will be your trainer. Chelsea, any questions that come up before I go on to some other best practices? Yes, there are a couple more questions. Um, uh, do we need to send schedules to Titan TV? No, you do not need to send them directly to us. The only time that you would need to send anything to Titan TV is if you are a Titan TV client and you know there's an issue or you've seen an issue on the guides or something or it's a continuous issue. What we always recommend in that case, you're gonna send an email to customercare at titantv.com and also copy TV editor fyitelevision.com just so that we can get that all <clears throat> process going because we don't know what the issue is. It could be something in our system. It could be a, a human error. It could be something FYI. We just suggest that you do include both of those on that email so that the, the issue, whatever it might be, would get resolved much quicker. All right, a couple more questions. Um, is there a time cutoff for updates? Like, do they need to send it in by midnight? Yes, so we know, I don't know about Grace Note or TV Media. I do know for FYI Television, for example, if you um, want to get something into their system, you need to get it to them. Um, they cut off their logs, I think, at 3 p.m. Central Time. So for anything to be in that data feed to Titan TV that night, it needs to be to them before that 3 p.m. That doesn't mean I wouldn't send it at 2 p.m. because the editor, again, has to be able to enter it into the system. So I would, you know, I would maybe get it in the morning to get to them. And then that's the idea is then the overnight process can come in our system. And that's why we kind of talk about that 48. So let's say you send it to FYI Red B at three o'clock in the afternoon. It's not going to be in that data feed that night. It's not going to be until the following night. And I'm going to assume that's going to be the same thing with Grace Note and, and TV Media and TiVo. There's some sort of time, probably in the afternoon, um, because a lot of times these are big files that they have to then send out to the different people that they provide data to, and it takes a lot to update. Um, so I would kind of do mid-afternoon, it's kind of the cutoff that they have to send it out, give yourself a couple hours to enter it, um, and then they can push it out. Any other questions? Uh, another, yes, a couple more questions. Um, so updating websites will help with some of the late schedule changes, correct? Correct. Um, especially if you are a Titan TV client, I always recommend that 
um, drive your, your consumers, your viewers to your website and use the media star to make those last minute changes. So at least you know that the guide on your website is always accurate to the information that you need. But also know that when you're making a change in MediaStar, it's not only just updating the guide on your website, uh, it's also updating TitanTV.com and Antenna Web's <coughs> guide as well. Uh, are TiVo and Xperi the same? Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's X-P-E-R-I. Yes, and I just recently found this out when I was doing some additional research. They are the same thing. I think they just had some change note. But yes, they are the same company. Okay, and another question here. I think this is going to be the last one. Um, does Titan TV uh, push out their programming to other services like traffic, such as Wide Orbit? What is the status of Titan TV programming data updating our traffic system? Yes, so we do send out our data to different um, internal tools. So one of them, for example, is Freewell's old Strata sales tool. We have an integration directly into that tool where we give data, data to them. We are currently with wide, working with Wide Orbit on a next-gen television project that we are sending information directly to Wide Orbit. Um, we were told that they would have that built in their system by this June with our goal to be able to highlight it at NAB in October. Um, we also have set up for some individual stations that they have some other internal system that they want to be able to send that guide data to. We've been able to send an XML data feed that is that systems they've been able to ingest. So there are options out there. And if there's some internal system that you said, hey, uh, you know, this is the same programming data that I have in MediaStar. Can I just send it there automatically or through a data feed instead of us having double type it? Send us an email. Let us look into us and we'll see what we can help you out with. One more question, Heidi, that just popped up. Um, possibly too specific, but <clears throat> do these listing services obtain network program changes directly from the networks, or do they rely on stations to provide those updates as well as updating local programming? So the best um, rule to go by is yes, all the data providers are in direct communications with the networks. Some of the data providers actually have a data feed that they get directly from the networks to kind of eliminate some of that delay as well. So they're updating the system. Um, that's a, a, a case with a lot of syndicators. The biggest thing to remember when you're communicating to the data providers is if you, during a t traditional or typical network pro programming time slot, that you're not airing network. So that's the one I think that's the, probably the biggest one that they need to know about. Otherwise, I think they're going to assume that, okay, this is an ABC station. They're going to take ABC network changes. It's those times that you don't. Um, or maybe you swap out. Um, it's a, not your the, the prime ABC football game that's airing in your area. You're going to actually air a different one because of where, how your DMA works. So, yes, the all-day providers get their information directly from the networks and syndicators. Just make sure you note to them if, especially if you're not airing traditional network programming in a traditional network time slot. All right. Do we have time for a couple more? Do you want to continue yeah. on and we can get to those later? Well, okay. Let me, let me um, go through a couple other here. Sounds good. Okay. So this is one we get quite often and we kind of even heard here. I set out my schedule every week. Why is it not getting updated? One of the things I would ask is how are you sending them out? Are you sending them as PDF, Excel, is it in a Word document, is it in your email? Um, and with that, are you highlighting changes? Are you making notes on the changes or are you just resending the full schedule? Um, when we talked to FYI Redby several years ago and said, how can we help our clients to be able to then be able to send change reports or reports to you that you will then catch those highlight changes? So one thing that they said, suggested that works really well is that if you send a grid, for example, here, highlight the change. Um, and then I've seen some where they have notes in the email itself or in the cover letter, they talk about a little bit about the notes. Um, and then they also list the date of the change, the date, the change, the date they made the change. So that way, too, the programmer or the person that's entering it, for example, at Red B and says, oh, Murdoch Mysteries, that was changed just today. Was, oh, and I haven't made it, you know, I'll go and make that change. So one is highlighting the changes within your report. And the second one is maybe just sending a list of only the changes. So if maybe you send your programming once a month, um, go ahead and send it, but then maybe you just send just the list of changes 
to them. It eliminates them having to go through your entire schedule to figure out what's wrong. Um, and I know some do a really good job. I've seen them come in, they have very detailed on the email, and then they say, you know, just for reference, attached is my grid, which works as well. But again, the biggest thing is to try to highlight those changes and make it so that they don't have to dig or try to figure out what's wrong. Any other questions come up? Uh, I think you answered a few uh, that had come in. Um, uh, could you explain how episode numbers are assigned in uh, MediaStar? So episodes is a, a breed of itself. Um, the reason I say that is that it depends on if it's a network program or a syndicated program. Um, if it is a network program, the network is determining that episode and they are then again communicating to the data provider and say, here are the episode number that we're airing at that time. And then within MediaStar, if you're a MediaStar client, the overnight process, as long as you have the correct uh, global program there for that network program, it will just walk in that episodic information episode number there. Now where it gets complicated is to syndicate it. The reason I say that, the prime example I use is Simpsons. Simpsons, for example, has multiple episode numbers. There's the original episode number of when it aired in network. And then because the syndicator, sometimes they do this, they have their own episode numbers. And depending on your contract, you don't have to follow a way, you know, you have to air this one at this time, this time. So that's where in that instance, you are the source of telling FYI, Grace Note, Yes, I have Simpsons, and here are the episodes that I'm airing on these days and these times. And you send the information out to that. So that particular show, you wanna make sure that they are aware of the episode that you're airing, because it might not match, or they might not know because Simpsons all over the board. We do know though some other syndicated um, programs that no matter what, even though it's syndicated, they're gonna air this all at the same time. But then there's an instant that there's a second run that day with a different episode. What I always recommend in that instance, send an email to the data providers and explain, I have Judge Judy at one o'clock, but I have a second run of Judge Judy at three o'clock and it's doing these episodes. I think that's where it gets complicated and sometimes um, mixed up at the data provider on what you're airing for episodes. So hopefully that answered their question. Uh, one more question, uh, who enters the new network programming uh, slash sporting events into Titan TV? Um, specifically when you do a program search. Um, I find that sometimes when CBS sends a new program order, it's entered immediately and other times it takes weeks. So uh, sports programs is another interesting thing within the system, especially in network. So again, the data provider is communicating directly with CBS, for example, on that sports. And CBS says to them, here's what we're gonna name that sport and here's what it's going to be. But then what we've learned is they're then telling the station a little bit of different name. So as the station, you're going into Titan TVs, which it is Red B that has entered that program information into our system. You are searching in MediaStar into the global program. You're searching for that sport program that CBS sent to you, but you're not finding it because it's not the same name of what they had told you know, Red B to enter. A lot of times what we do, especially for sports, as you see here, it just says college basketball. I always recommend generalize it. So do college basketball, search for college basketball. And then with sports, the games and who's playing is actually the episode. So once you look at that and in the global program library, when you do a search, you can see the episodes. And if you need help doing that, just let us know, we'll walk you through that. But then you can say, oh, there's the team. Yes, this is the correct program. There's also an option if you're a full media star scheduler, you can see the import um, and what the, that program is coming from FYI, um, Red Beat. But I can tell you there's even times that me and Chelsea can't find that program and we need to reach out to Red Beat. So if there's ever an instance where you can't find it for whatever reason, don't get frustrated. Just send customer care at titantv.com an email and say, I can't find this. Can you help me out? So again, that program information for all sporting events for Titan TV clients is being entered into our system through Red Bee. Any other ones? Um, one more, I think related to the episodes again, um, would I have to specifically ask the syndicator for a list um, of those episodes so I can inform uh, FYI? Not necessarily. Um, it really depends on the syndicator. So 
Um, I would say the only time you really need to ask for that list is if you, through your contract for that syndication, you have the right to air whatever episode that you want when you want. If it is one of those syndicated that, that yes, they're going to send and they're going to air, you're going to air whatever episode they send, more likely FYI already has that information. It's if that information's off a little bit or you have the right to air what you want, then you can send that to FYI. Um, Red B. Otherwise, they should get that directly from the syndicator. And that's all the questions that we have so far. So one of the questions I actually got prior to this that somebody wanted to know was, we've been talking heavily about metadata, all the program description. Well, but what about if, if you see that your program show card or your logos or thumbnails are not right on the guides or the on-screen guides? How do you get them updated? Um, again, I'm going to direct you back to those four people, um, or those four companies. So again, more than likely, if Grace Note is providing that cable company uh, the, the program metadata, they're probably providing them show cards in, rich, um, in the logos and such, and especially for local programming. So, and if you notice something is wrong, uh, just let them know. If you are a Titan TV client, again, we would let FYI know, Red B know about that to get updated in their system. But we also have a tool called Client Media Manager Tool that allows you to update and upload any of those images that would then show up on the Titan TV Guide on your website and also then later out on TitanTV.com and soon to be out in Next Gen TV ESG data feed. Since in 3.0, the Enrich Guide will now have show cards and rich media. So the consumers over the air are going to have a very similar guide experience that consumers are now having in OTT. If that's something you're interested or want to know if you have access to, again, just send us an email at customercare.com. We'll make sure you have access. We'll walk you through it. And then that gives you a complete control. Now, one thing I did note here is the next question is, well, what kind of logo should I send? What's the spec? So um, I do have in one of the handouts is actually the spec document um, that we received. But just in very general terms, um, the logo that you send, either the show card or the station logo, you want the resolution to be at, you know, at least 300, um, then a minimal of 72 PPI. The file type that is preferred is a PNG and have it transparent background. This is really important. If you look here at our Next Gen Titan TV guide here, our background is white, but there might be another application that the background is black. So you want it transparent to be able to make it look a lot better within that um, provider's guide. Now they can use JPEGs, just realize a lot of times JPEGs can get very pixelized, so it needs to be a high resolution. That's why it's preferred the, the PNG. And then the preferred dimension is about 500 pixel by, and then by length. So that is a matter of the image or the show card. So hopefully that answers the questions about that. This is something that I know we just started getting into a couple of years ago, and I can see it just expanding even more down the road. Are there any other additional questions, Chelsea? Yes, a couple more popped up. Uh, as a local PBS station, will the adoption of IDER numbers help make the surfacing of our local content episode information in listings, as well as the show art, thumbnails, um, et cetera? And will there be a better data-driven export-import process for listings? And there's more to that question um, with Eider. And you said PBS or CBS? PBS. PBS. Um, I can tell you Titan TV, we're actually in uh, working with Eider on a, on a next gen project um, of the idea of being able to pull that Eider number all the way through the system. And that would be actually having within our system to go search for an Eider number or assign an Eider number to a particular program um in rich media and then we would send that information out to traffic traffic go to automation automation would send that information back to us if there's any change with that iter number so that we can then update our system and then push it out to piece up into the guides so will that be the case going forward i don't know but i personally think that is the way that a lot will go and hopefully it will um, with 3.0 because of um, dynamic ad insertion so it's just a matter of the biggest thing that we have internal questions is um, Top Gun's a prime example. Okay, are you airing the original Top Gun movie? It has an item number. Is it Top Gun made for TV? It has a different item number. 
and how are you as a programmer going to pick that? So those are some of the rules that I know that we're working with Eider to try to better to define. I don't know you as if you as a PBS station, if you guys have started to work down that same route. If you have, I'd love to get more of your thoughts and feedback on how you're doing it. Um, and it's just a matter of will the industry in general pick up this new workflow of including an IDER number with their programming? I think that's still to be determined. How do we get rid of old program titles within Titan TV? Yes. So the nice thing about our system, so if you go into your MediaStar tool and you go into program library, you can delete any of those programs in there. And I highly recommend you do it on maybe a quarterly basis. The nice thing is it's going to delete it from your library. It's not going to delete it from your schedule. And you can at any time actually go back and re pull down that program and put it back into your program library. We, cl we have collected millions and millions of programs that are in the program library with the idea is that maybe they'll re-air someday. So to keep your program library clean, go ahead and um, go through it and delete it. Now, if you're referring to, let's say, a local news program that is no longer airing, uh, maybe it's got an old anchor's name in it. Well, I would recommend in that instance is send again our customercaretitantv.com an email saying, hey, this is an old program. It shouldn't be in the system at all because you know it's an old anchor. That's where we will then work directly with Redby to make sure that they clean up their system as well. Any other questions? Yes, are titles that I create available to others? Yes. Um, so there, when you go and do a search in MediaStar and you go to the program search, you are in that search result, there are user added programs. Um, so, but there's all those so different options if let's say you're within a group, um, let's say you're all out of Nebraska, there's four of you stations and one person is the main person that's um, entering and creating that program for your local program. Communicate to us, we can show you through MediaStar how there are some ways you can what we call distribute that information to those other stations that were within yours so that they have that program, they don't have to search for it and they just have to then plop it into their schedule. Hopefully All that's right, a couple other, oh, sorry. <clears throat> no, a couple ahead. other questions that we have here. Um, can I rearrange or add channels to my lineup on the online guide? You can't yourself do that, um, but if you, what you'd have to do is send an email to Customer care at TitanTV.com. Let us know exactly. We need to know the call letters, the channel number, so if it's 2.1, the affiliation, and then we can go ahead and add it to the guide on your website. We can add it to your media star and your piece up as well. And then what we do as well is we would then let Redbean know so that wherever they provide data, they're also then providing that same channel out as well. And I just changed an anchor name on an old show. Do I need to separately notify anyone? I would, because again, you're changing that program just on um, MediaStar and any of the Titan TV products, so the guide on your website and piece up. But Redbeat, that hasn't been changed in Redbeat system yet. So I would let them know that, hey, and I'm almost gonna have it, hey, by the way, just you know, send it to your, the four, your main list. Can you make sure, these are all updated and you have the correct programming schedule or program anchor information in there. We see that all the time and we appreciate that because then we can make sure we have the accurate information. And a lot of times our customers say, yep, we've got it correct or nope, we put a ticket in and we'll make sure we get it updated. Will we get a copy of this presentation? Yes, so anyone that registered um, and we had quite a few more registered than um, we found out that was able to get into this webinar. So we will be sending this out. And one of the things that we'll be sending out um, separate emails, kind of get a survey. We want to get your thoughts and feedback. We can dive deeper into this. Um, or even if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one or maybe a, you know, a bunch of people at your station have a lot of questions, um, just send us an email and then we can go ahead and get that set up for you. So I'll put my information, our information back up there. But yes, do expect, uh, I would say tomorrow, you'll get an email to a link to this webinar. And if we need to set up additional ones, we can do that as well. 
And that is the last question that we've had so far. Does anyone have anything else to add as in questions? All righty, Heidi. Well, we'll I give think 14 was... minutes of their time back. <laughs> uh, so the biggest thing is thank you again for your time today. Hopefully we've been able to answer most of your questions that you have. If you have any additional questions, let us know. Also, when that email comes out with the, the survey, if you could just let us know, what did you like about this webinar? Maybe tell us what you didn't like. We're learning here. Um, also, let us know if there are other topics that you want to hear about. And it doesn't even have to be Titan TV related. We have a lot of great partners in, in the industry that if we need to pull in somebody else that to help somebody answer some of your questions, we'd love to partner with them and do that for you. So just let us know. And then we're always available. Just again, the biggest thing is you can either email myself or Chelsea or customer care at titantv.com. Thank you everyone and we have a great day.